This week's video is sponsored by our original science fiction audio drama, The Sojourn. Volumes 1 and 2 are already available on Google Books, iTunes, Scribed, and various other audio platforms. You can find them linked in the description. And we're hoping we're only about two months out from the release of Volume 3. Give or take a few weeks, based on production. If you're looking to check out Volumes 1 and 2 and you choose to get the series on Patreon, not only is it cheaper to pledge for a month than it is to buy the series on another distributor, but if you pledge at Wanderer tier or higher, you'll also get access to our Visual Dictionary, which is a kind of comprehensive law book on the series done in the style of the old Star Wars Visual Dictionaries, and various other cool pieces of content over on the Patreon. Thank you all for listening, hope you'll check it out, and I hope you enjoy this week's video. Developed by the Quarren Freedak Engineering Corps, with the assistance of Hirsch Kessel Drive Incorporated, the Recusant class Light Destroyer was a well-renowned and highly specialised warship, originally commissioned for use by the Commerce Guild, and later becoming a staple of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, after the Guild pledged their allegiance to the Confederacy. The Recusant class is 1,187 metres in length and 157 metres across, presenting a distinctively skeletal space frame, with most of its armour and weapons placed in the forward quarter, befitting the ship's role as a focused and aggressive destroyer. The vessel carries a crew of 300 with space for an embarked ground army of 40,000 deactivated B-1 battle droids, but was in fact directly controlled by a large droid brain rather than by its embarked crew, in an attempt to dramatically upscale the design philosophy applied to droid fighter craft like the Vulture Droid and Tri-Fighter. The Recusant was extremely heavily armed with a total of 15 turbo lasers of various mounts and yields, plus a huge prow-mounted super-heavy turbo laser cannon for use against large hostile targets, and dozens of lighter laser cannons and point defence weapons to offer protection against strike craft and smaller warships. These weapons were more than sufficient to overwhelm the defences of Republic Star Destroyers and other targets, especially when employed as part of a small pack of similar warships. The Recusant class offers slightly below average acceleration for a light destroyer, and the ship's aft quarter is almost entirely unarmoured and vulnerable, but these shortcomings are a quite deliberate aspect of the ship's singularly focused construction. The Recusant is designed for one purpose to relentlessly and aggressively advance toward the enemy, with its bow armour positioned to absorb incoming fire, and its powerful arrays of forward weapons positioned to overwhelm its quarry. This tactic is aided by the fearless nature of the ship's droid brain, which lends itself better to such single-minded aggression than a sapient commander. But the results in practice have often been mixed, with the droid brain struggling to process any situations more complex than this manner of direct attack, resulting in slow reaction times in complex engagements, and more notoriously, an infamous reputation for accidental collisions with friendly ships on manoeuvres. In addition to its primary role as a frontline attack vessel, many recusant class ships were outfitted to serve as minor command vessels in the Confederate Navy, with many carrying valuable T-series tactical droids and ST-series super tactical droids to provide detailed strategic analysis and reactive commands on multiple fronts. On a few occasions, recusant class vessels have even served as flagships for some of the Confederacy's most important commanders, such as General Grievous and the Dark Jedi acolyte Asajj Ventress. Like almost all Confederate warships, the recusant class was equipped to carry out planetary troop deployments and contribute to large-scale invasions, with an embarked complement of C-9979 landing craft allowing the ship to deploy its large supply of battle droids. Though while formidable, this complement was normally insufficient for any target of serious strategic value, and as such, recusant class vessels would most often simply add their forces to larger deployments carried out by massive Providence and Lukraholt class vessels. Though less frequently deployed than its Munificent and Providence class contemporaries, the Recusant class served in many of the most significant engagements of the Clone Wars, including the attempted invasion of Kamino, the pivotal Battle of Umbara, and the final climactic engagement over Coruscant in the final days of the war. Ships of the class were rarely seen after the war's end, with most being consigned to scrapyards on worlds like Bracca and Raxus Prime but some did find themselves granted a new lease of life in service to the Rebel Alliance, with their droid brains removed or reprogrammed and their internal space converted to allow the ship to serve as a support tender and logistics vessel. 